I'm very happy to talk to you today about this resource, which has been in development for many, many years, and we look forward to it publishing later this year. The Transformation of Shopping explores the social and cultural history of shopping, the retail industry, and daily and working life, predominantly through the lens of the department store. As a BBC Culture article recently noted, from Victorian London to Soviet era Moscow, department stores have changed the way we shop and have shaped global culture. Though our resource spans over 140 years of history, showing how department stores adapted to changing consumer needs and expectations over time, with a special focus on the lived experience of the customer. Importantly, department store archives provide ample coverage of other shopping venues. The resource covers the establishment of department stores in the early 19th century, many of which began as mail order companies, wholesale merchants or small high street shops. It also traces their development from fixtures on the high street to suburban complexes established after World War II to central features of shopping malls developed from the 1970s onwards. Resource not only features department store archives, but also trade journals and union records to provide a range of perspectives on the retail industry. It's designed to appeal to undergraduates as well as advanced researchers in social, business and cultural history. This resource will complement and build upon the AM's American consumer culture portfolio. It will also appeal to scholars of global history with its broader geographic coverage. So there are 14 archives from over six countries featuring in the resource. It includes major department store brands such as Wanamaker's, Lord & Taylor and Selfridges, but also examples of lesser known stores so that users can examine and compare regional stances on race, gender and class. As Dot mentioned earlier, selection and presentation of content is informed by an interdisciplinary editorial board with expertise in the different locations and time periods. So it encompasses several topics. The resource examines the de-skilling of shop work, for example, unionism and the feminization of retail over the 20th century, as well as the effects of the civil rights movement on the retail industry. And you can see a number of the themes that users can explore on this slide. The appeal of our resource is its coverage of harder to access archival material. The collection is also highly visual. Check out a few examples from this list. It contains hundreds of photographs of interiors, window displays and events to illustrate how stores changed over time. For business historians, there are annual reports and ledgers, and there is correspondence from customers, including complaints, special requests and thank you cards. So to draw out some highlights, that these are a selection of photographs from the Hudson's Bay Company archives which are held at Archives of Manitoba in Winnipeg. The Hudson's Bay Company is one of the oldest and largest companies to operate department stores in Canada. These photographs date from 1893 to 1956 and feature stores in Vancouver, Montreal and Alberta. We have also included a very unique collection of posters produced by artist Anz Tolli for Tolina Korpermeyer a department store in Estonia. The majority of posters date from the 1980s and so provide a rare and sought after insight into Soviet consumer culture, offering a counterpoint to materials from capitalist nations and the rest of the collection. Another example are the staff newsletters. These are rich, accessible sources for tracing the social history of the stores. The newsletters shown here are from McEwen's and Anthony Horden and Sons, both department stores in Australia, and the Ken Bar in the centre is a Glaswegian newsletter from the House of Fraser archives. These newsletters are invaluable for tracing personal histories and contain informal anecdotes of staff encounters of customers. Finally, trade journals. These chronicle developments in the industry over time. The example on the left shows the popular US publication, Department Store Management, which covers late 1960s to mid 70s. Now these journals are typically controlled and produced by those in management. On the right, we have an image from the shop assistant, a trade union publication. 
our resource features a complete run from the late 19th to mid 20th century. And this title presents an altogether different perspective, covering campaigns for improved wages and working conditions. So that is a, a whistle-stop tour of the resource, and I'll end it there, and thank you for listening. <laughs>